Now the ECB seems to be in a rush to exit this accommodative stance. How dangerous is lower for longer? So first, thank you for inviting me. Um, well, basically the thrust of what the Governing, governing Council decided uh, last week uh, is to acknowledge the improving uh, economic uh, circumstances, uh, to um, tr translate it into a, a revised forward guidance because we have to adapt to economic reality, but also to give a sense of patience when it comes to rates being low. Uh, we are st still not seeing inflation where we would like it to be. Uh, we are still not seeing the uh, criteria that we've set uh, for inflation to be sustainable, uh, all being met. Uh, so uh, you need a sense of patience here. How much of a nightmare is, is stronger GDP on QE? Stronger GDP is uh, a good news. Uh, it's an unqualified good news. Um, this has been acknowledged by the governing council last week, and that's why we changed our communication to adapt to, to, adapt to the changing reality. Um, the, it also shows that our monetary policy measures are working. Uh, all the jobs that have been created in the Eurozone over the last uh, three, four years or so, a lot of them uh, have been created thanks to the uh, accommodative monetary policy stance. So it is working very well. Uh, now we have an inflation mandate, so when it comes to the next steps, we'll have to uh, focus on inflation. Why was tapering not discussed last week? That wasn't discussed at all. Uh, it's too early to discuss it. Uh, we had to... Um, acknowledge the, the changing reality. Uh, we discussed a lot the economic situation. We discussed the uh, prospects for inflation. Uh, there was a sense of progress also when it comes to inflation where in spite of the inflation being revised downwards, um, if you look carefully at the staff forecast, you see that inflation is also less dependent uh, on our monetary policy measures, which is one step in the right direction, uh, but it's not yet uh, quite enough to, uh, to start discussing tapering. We're not there yet. So when do you think tapering needs to be discussed? Again, even to just accustom the markets to the idea of tapering. I don't want to, be, I don't want to give dates here. I don't think it serves a purpose. Uh, the reason being that we're very much uh, data driven. We're driven by facts. So we'll discuss tapering uh, whenever uh, we see this, the economic situation and the uh, prospects for inflation uh, ripe for discussing it. Do, do, do you have in your mind a perfect idea? And I'm not going to press you on it, but, but do you have a perfect idea of when tapering should be discussed and what it would look like? No, again, again, that will depend a lot on the economic number, that will depend a lot on inflation. Uh, we obviously have to discuss it before the end of the year. That's obvious given uh, uh, what we've said on uh, buying bonds um, uh, until at the end of the year and, and, and later if necessary. So uh, that discussion will take place, uh, but it will take place when uh, the data will support it. Okay, is July a, a live meeting? I know we're talking about it, but is it a live meeting given uh, that it's July, so there's actually usually low volatility in the markets, and given that you're not actually doing any inflation, any new forecasts? Well, we do work in July. It may look nice around, but we do work in July. Um, and um, as I said, the, the discussion last week was very much about taking stock of the progress in the economy, taking stock of the progress uh, that will support a, an improved path for inflation, uh, and that's a discussion that we'll have again and again. So one lesson of what we've decided last week is that the Governing Council wants to keep uh, our forward guidance aligned with reality, and that's going to continue. You're one of the brightest minds when it comes to academic economics. So why is inflation so low? Is it structural, um, or, or is it just a, that we're, we may be counting things differently? No, I don't think it's, much, it's that, that much about the, the statistics that may play a role, but it's a lot about the, the changing uh, structures uh, of the labor market in particular. Uh, this is a recovery which is uh, jobs rich. Uh, a lot of jobs have been created, are being created in the Eurozone economy, but it's a different kind of jobs. Uh, lots of them are um, on temporary contracts, lots of them are part-time, and this produces less inflationary pressures. So. There will be a time where they uh, are consolidated into uh, permanent uh, um, uh, full-time contracts and then nominal wages will start growing, but we're not yet there. So it has a lot to do with the, the structure of the jobs market and that's, uh, that's certainly an area where we're paying a lot of attention to understand in detail uh, the, the nature of the jobs being created. Do you think the market understands all of these nuances quite well, especially when it comes to, to when you talk about tapering and exactly what kind of potential roads that may take? 
I think it's very well understood. Uh, the uh, markets have the example of the, of the Fed in the US. Uh, it has to be different here because we are, we're operating on different markets. But we have a successful experience with, uh, with, uh, with policy normalization. Uh, we've been able to communicate uh, our intentions. The market reaction to the governing council last week was very positive, very smooth. So I'm not very worried here. Yeah, but it, that's because you didn't announce much. I mean, I know that there was, um, is, is there a danger that when you do announce something a little bit more substantive that the markets go, in, go into haywire? Well, we did change our communication and that was a significant change. Uh, and the market uh, understood very well, I think. Um, Benoît Coré, give me a sense of, the, when you talk about forward guidance, right, and we talked about the data points and everything seems very, very clear, are there, are there parallels with the Fed when it comes to inflation just not being as strong as you were hoping it would be? I don't think so, um, because the economies are different. Um, I was mentioning the labor market earlier. The labor market has been very different in the US and in Europe. In the US, the participation rate uh, has fallen. So a lot of uh, workers have been uh, detached from the labor market or disenfranchised from the labor market. They're just staying at home and have lost any hope to find a job. That is not the case in Europe. Uh, so we'll have also to account for these differences. On a trade-weighted basis, euro is that much stronger compared to the dollar. Is that a concern at all? Do, do you think about it? Or no? Well, we don't have an exchange rate target. Uh, and um, insofar as uh, exchange rate movements do reflect uh, economic fund the economic uh, uh, fundamental situations, uh, that's fine. So there's nothing to, uh, nothing to comment uh, at, uh, at the stage we're in. Um, compared to six months ago, what is the risk that you still perceive in Europe? Forecasts are a lot better, right? So it seems that things are getting rosier. Well, the governing council has judged last week that the balance of that risk were now balanced uh, and also added that um, we see downside risks mostly coming from the outside. So we see risks uh, surrounding the future course of uh, U.S. economic policies. We see risks in emerging market economies. Uh, and these are the risks we want to focus on. Risks coming com from the inside, that is from within the Eurozone economy, uh, are much less than they used to be. How, how would you qualify tensions within the governing council? I know there are different views, but is, is that healthy? It seems like you're becoming more like a, an MPC BOE monetary style. It is healthy to have different views. We are working for 19 countries, so we need different views to be reflected. Uh, different, different economies inside the Eurozone are, are running at different paces, and that has to be reflected. So, so far, so good, uh, as, as long as the governing council can form a consensus. And what we've decided last week was very much, uh, was very much a consensus, which is, uh, which is good and, and gives strength to our communication. Um, Benoît Coré, how do you rate uh, political concerns? Is there a, a danger that because France is out of the way and it was an outcome that the markets like, that we now underestimate political risk? Well, political risk is there. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not for us to, uh, to, um, uh, to decide on political risks. We are not a political institution. We don't uh, decide based on political outcomes. We decide uh, based on economic facts. Uh, and political uh, timelines should certainly not uh, be uh, in our way when we have to decide on monetary policy. Um, that said, it's true that political uncertainty, uncertainty has held back uh, consumption and investment uh, to some extent in the Eurozone. Uh, I very much hope that uh, in France this will not be the case anymore, but that will certainly support uh, the, uh, the uh, strength of the, of the French economy. Uh, and I also very much hope that the outcome of the French election can support a, a momentum of reform, starting in France, obviously, but also in Europe, uh, that will support our monetary policy. We want a, a stronger Eurozone for our monetary policy to be, to be effective, and uh, France has a key role to play here. When it comes to fiscal policies, right, Mario Draghi has been asking for fiscal policies for as far as I can remember. Why would it be different this time? It's not that much about fiscal policies, it's a lot about structural policies, it's about uh, improving uh, labor markets, and, and as I said, it's about making the Eurozone work better, which is a political discussion, which the ECB cannot lead and should not lead, because we're not a political institution. We don't have a mandate to do that. So we need um, uh, Eurozone member states, starting with Germany and with France, to, to lead that discussion. And uh, I very much uh, hope, I'm very confident now that that discussion will start. Does the UK election last week make your job harder or easier? Well, the UK is not so important for the Eurozone economy. So uh, we, uh, I wish, uh, I wish uh, the best for the, for the UK economy. Uh, I certainly trust the Bank of England to steer uh, the economy uh, through this, uh, this political uncertainty. Uh, but at the end, that's not the major risk for us. Okay, what does it mean for clearing houses? 
So clearing houses uh, is an important discussion. That discussion uh, has to be led by the European Commission because that's about lawmaking in Europe. Uh, the European Commission will, within days, I guess, uh, uh, make new proposals when it comes to, um, uh, to derivatives and to, and to clearing houses uh, with an objective to ensure the safety and soundness of clearing um, across the EU um, when the uh, UK leaves. So, so far we've been able to ensure the safety and soundness of your denominated clearing uh, through very robust uh, arrangements that we have with the Bank of England mm -hmm. and with the uh, CCPs located in London and that works very well. The basis for the arrangements will fall uh, in 19 when the UK leaves and so we need, we'll need an alternative. Uh, different alternatives are considered by the uh, European Commission and uh, they have to lead that discussion. So I would defer to the Commission here. Right, but, but countries want uh, basically sovereignty over, over that and the ECB, the Governing Council, I believe that the best person to regulate that is yourselves. How do you think it will, it will end up? So the, the Governing Council, the ECB has a stake in that discussion insofar as financial stability is concerned and insofar as monetary policy transmission is concerned. And we have a statutory role as the central bank of issue for euro-denominated transactions. Uh, and I welcome the fact that the Commission has um, uh, referred to the role that we should play as central bank of issue and we certainly need to play a strong role here. But when it comes to um, requirements which will be hardwired into Europe and law, so say for instance location, do we need location? That's a, for the Commission to, uh, to have a say. That's not for us to decide. Okay, give me a sense of what happens with Greece. Greece um, will be discussed in the Eurogroup uh, in Luxembourg uh, Thursday this week. Uh, that's uh, only w another uh, of a long series of meetings. I very much hope, and the ECB very much hope, that this will be the concluding meeting uh, that will um, precise uh, the, the way uh, the Greek debt will be addressed by the, uh, by the Eurogroup. Uh, the Greek government has done its part. They have done their part in terms of policies, in terms of the MOU, uh, and now it's for Eurogroup ministers to deliver when it comes to uh, confirming uh, the sustainability of Greek debt. Um, and as I said earlier, it wouldn't uh, serve a purpose to keep the Greek economy in a limbo for one, money, for one more year. We need a decisive, a decisive uh, act by the Eurogroup that will uh, create confidence uh, in the Greek economy. It's time for investors to come back in Greece. It's time for depositors to bring back their money to Greek banks. And it's for the Eurogroup to give the signal that will make it possible. So you, so you think the resolution this week will be something that's acceptable to the ECB? Well, there are, another discussion will be about the, the monetary policy consequences and inclusion of Greek debt uh, into QE. Yeah. Uh, that's a different discussion. It is a monetary policy discussion. Uh, so the governing council will take whatever will come out of the Eurogroup and this will be uh, considered and assessed uh, against our rules. Uh, we are certainly not going to be part of a political uh, quid pro quo in the Eurogroup. These are two different discussions. Okay, I know we're, we're going around the world in, in, uh, 60, sorry, in 15 minutes. Give me a sense of banks and how concerned you still are about Italian banks. Did the resolution last week that we had in Spain, is it a blueprint for how you think Italian bank problems should be resolved? I w I'm very hesitant to pass a judgment on, uh, on or even pass a comment on, on, on Italian banks. I'm not the supervisor. We have a separation principle that for, the, for my su colleagues on the supervisory side to uh, assess and communicate. So Daniel Nui, Sabine Lautenschläger will do that. When it comes to uh, the resolution of Popular last week, um, I think the main, les the main lesson is that we have a system that works. So that's, a, um, that's a, a positive test for the institutional setup that we have with the single resolution board. Uh, European Commission and um, and uh, single supervisory mechanism and ECB in its monetary policy function. That cooperation has worked very well in a very swift way, which is what you want to see uh, in case of resolution. Would that be the case for any other bank? I don't know. All banks are different. Uh, and um, well, you know that quote from uh, Leo Tolstoy, who, who said that uh, all happy families are uh, alike, uh, and uh, all uh, every unhappy family is different. So every failed bank is different. All right, um, very diplomatic. One very last question, because we haven't talked about China at all. When it comes to, to uh, external factors, how should we look at China? Well, China remains a major, a major uh, 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 area of interest for us. I would not say a concern of a risk, because so far the Chinese authorities have been able to, to steer the transition uh, in the Chinese system uh, very well uh, and to, uh, to provide stability to the world economy. 
Um, that said, there are issues to be addressed, shadow banking, uh, uh, corporate debt, um, transition towards domestic demand, transition towards uh, 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 decarbonize the decarbonized economy. Uh, these are uh, uh, daunting challenges uh, and that will stay with us in the years to come. But so far, the Chinese authorities have been very successful in, uh, in steering the economy and not making uh, China become an issue for the global economy. We've got enough issues, uh, so we don't want China to become one of them. Thank you so much for your time, Benoît Thank you.